Many people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis have adrenal fatigue. My goal is not only to explain how this develops, but to give you some tips which will help to restore the health of your adrenal glands. In addition to being a licensed healthcare professional who has helped patients with adrenal fatigue, I personally was diagnosed with an autoimmune thyroid disorder, had stress out adrenals, and successfully restored the health of my adrenal glands. While many people are aware of the common symptoms associated with adrenal fatigue, such as a constant feeling of exhaustion, sleeping difficulties, difficulty concentrating, what many people don't realize is that stressed out adrenal glands can actually cause an autoimmune disease such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis to develop. The reason for this is because chronic adrenal fatigue can compromise the immune system. So over a long period of time, this weakened immune system can make someone susceptible to an autoimmune thyroid disorder such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The good news is that most cases of adrenal fatigue can be cured. The problem is that most people don't know how to do this, as many simply go out and purchase some nutritional supplements from their local health food store, hoping this will help. Some will consult with a medical doctor, but the fact remains that most doctors don't know how to properly treat this common problem. I too was guilty of this when I first began practicing. As my first few years of practicing, I would also simply tell many of my patients to eat healthy, tell them to take supplements, and to do other things. The truth is that eating well and proper nutritional supplementation can help, but doing this alone will not be enough. To understand this better, let's look at three of the major causes of adrenal fatigue. Cause number one is chronic stress. This is a major cause of adrenal fatigue as while the adrenal glands were meant to deal with acute stress situations, they cannot effectively deal with chronic prolonged stress. Unfortunately, we live in a society where the majority of people have some type of chronic stress in their life, which over a period of months and years will take its toll on the adrenal glands, resulting in adrenal fatigue. Cause number two, poor eating habits. Eating poorly can definitely affect the health of your adrenal glands and eventually contribute to adrenal fatigue. This is especially true for those who frequently eat refined carbohydrates, in which many people fit under this category. The reason this can affect the adrenal glands is because refined foods remove both the nutrients and the fiber from the whole food sources. While the manufacturers do replace some of the removed nutrients, these refined foods no longer have the fiber component to help slow down the absorption. What this means is that when you eat a refined food, it absorbs quickly into the bloodstream and spikes up the blood sugar levels. So someone who has a habit of eating refined carbohydrates throughout the day, such as sugary cereals and snacks, bread, pasta, this will cause the blood sugar levels to spike up, and then they'll come crashing down over and over again. Over a period of months and years, this will put a considerable amount of stress on the adrenal glands, as well as other endocrine glands in the body. While I'm not going to discuss the physiology behind this here, adrenal fatigue affects the hormones cortisol, which is released when the blood sugar levels are too low, and insulin, which are that it's released by the pancreas when the blood sugar levels are high. Over time, this can lead to depleted cortisol levels, which in turn can lead to chronic fatigue and many other symptoms associated with stress out adrenal glands. This can also lead to conditions such as insulin resistance, diabetes, and other autoimmune disorders. Cause number three is not eating regularly. In addition to eating junk food frequently, many people are guilty of not eating on a consistent basis throughout the day. Many will skip breakfast, which also isn't a good thing to do. This once again all ties in with balancing blood sugar levels, and if you skip breakfast and or go more than a couple of hours without eating upon awakening, this will put a lot of stress on your adrenal glands, eventually leading to adrenal fatigue. There are other causes of adrenal fatigue besides these, other fa- these, other fa- these three factors I mentioned, but just making these changes in your lifestyle can really do wonders when it comes to adrenal health. As I mentioned before, weak adrenal glands can actually cause Hashimoto's thyroiditis to develop. The way this happens is weak adrenal glands puts the body in a state of catabolism, which means it is breaking down. As you know, the thyroid gland controls the metabolism of the body, so when the body is in a state of catabolism, the thyroid gland will slow down, which can result in a hypothyroid condition. Weak adrenal glands can also compromise the immune system, which of course is a big factor in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. While weak adrenal glands isn't always the cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it is a common cause, and by correcting the adrenal problem, this can also help to restore the health of someone who has Hashimoto's. So how can you reverse adrenal fatigue and restore the health of your adrenals? Here are some of the things you can do which will have a profound impact on adrenal health. 
First, you could do a better job of managing the stress in your life. I realize this isn't easy to do, but the fact remains is that if you, th if you don't do a good job of managing the stress in your life, there is virtually no chance of restoring the health of your adrenals. Just about everyone deals with chronic stress, so I'm not suggesting that you can eliminate all of the different stressors. However, most of us can do a much better job of handling the stress. The second thing you could do is reduce the amount of refined carbohydrates you eat. Although it would be great if you could completely eliminate all the refined foods in your diet, even if you just dramatically reduce how much refined foods you eat daily, it can help a great deal. Eat more whole foods and try to make sure that each meal incorporates some protein. I personally grew up eating sugary cereals every morning for breakfast, but these days I have a healthy protein shake for breakfast, which includes some berries, some raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries, some purified water, protein powder, flaxseed oil, and an organic egg. And while this might not seem too appealing to you, it actually tastes pretty decent and it gives me a great deal of energy to start the day. Uh, if you really want it to be a little bit sweeter, then you can always add a half a banana. Now, this doesn't mean you also need to start the day with a protein shake, as you can have some organic eggs or some other healthy source of protein. And no, organic sugary cereal isn't healthy. I brought this up because some people think that just because a product is organic means that it is healthy, but this isn't true. While it might be better than eating a non-organic brand, it still is a refined carbohydrate. Another thing you could do is to eat regularly throughout the day and don't skip breakfast. In addition to eating breakfast, try not to go longer than two hours throughout the day without eating. And by the way, getting back to eating breakfast, you don't have to eat a huge breakfast to start the morning. I realize that many people don't feel hungry upon waking up, but you still do need to eat some type of protein to begin your day. Even if it's just a few bites of something which is of high protein, that's better than not eating at all. I personally like the protein drink not only because it gives me some protein to start the day, but also it immediately hydrates my body as I add two cups of purified water. So eating breakfast upon waking up and then eating every two hours thereafter will do wonders in balancing your blood sugar levels. Many people want to know if taking nutritional supplements and or herbal remedies can help with adrenal fatigue. They can definitely help, although I personally think it's best to consult with a natural endocrine doctor, mainly because it's not as if everyone with adrenal fatigue needs to take the same supplements and herbs, and plus people will need to take different dosages. The one herb I will mention which can help with the sugar cravings is gymnema. This is very effective in helping to eliminate any sugar cravings you have. Now, once again, I do recommend that you consult with a natural endocrine doctor to know what dose, the dose you should take as well as getting a high quality product. If you follow the advice I have given, over time you will see your energy at levels return, will sleep better, and overall will feel much better. This not only can help to reverse the adrenal fatigue, but along with incorporating other natural treatment methods, it can also help to fully restore the health of someone who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. While some of these things you no doubt can do on your own to help improve your adrenal health, if you suffer from Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you'd like to consider a natural treatment protocol, I would highly recommend consulting with a competent natural endocrine doctor. After all, we're talking about a serious autoimmune thyroid disorder, and if you want to receive optimal results, it is best to consult with an expert. To receive more natural thyroid health tips, please visit naturalendocrinesolutions.com where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How to Treat Graves' Disease and Hashimoto's Thyroiditis Naturally. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. Thanks for watching this presentation.